Hi everyone, in this video we are going to investigate what, if anything, the wave equation can tell us about a chain or a massive rope hanging freely under gravity while it's supported at both of its ends. So I've written down the wave equation over here. I've included a forcing term on the right hand side, so that f of x and t is a force per unit length applied to the, uh, the chain or the rope. If you'd like to see where this comes from, I did derive this a couple of videos back. One thing I'll point out is that the c in that equation has the interpretation of the speed of waves on the on the rope and uh, it's given by the square root of the tension which is assumed to be uniform in the derivation of this equation tension divided by the density or the the mass per unit length so let's also just draw a quick diagram of the particular scenario that we're investigating so we've got our two points that we're fixing the end of our chain to right they're at equal height so intuitively you would expect the chain to take some sort of uh, symmetrical arc shape like that and the x and the y in the wave equation are well the the x is a coordinate along the length of the chain it's horizontal here that's x and then let's define our y to be pointing upwards like that and we are also going to say that our two points uh, the fixed ends of the chain are a distance of capital L apart from each other now for this video we're going to make the assumption that the chain isn't actually moving in other words it's sort of settled down into its final configuration as we've drawn in the diagram there now I'm just going to make a note of that. Let's call that uh, sort of the steady state situation. It's stopped changing its state over time. Um, under those conditions, well, the time derivatives of y are all zero. And so that first term in our wave equation just disappears. So we can summarize that as just saying, well, y double dot uh, is equal to zero. Now, what should we do about that f of x and t term? Well, as I showed a couple of videos back, that f is not really just a force, but it's a force per unit length. Now, um, the force here, the external force, is coming from gravity. In other words, the weight of the chain, and the weight is just its mass times the strength of gravity, right? Gravitational field strength, g. If we want to turn it into a mass per unit length, we can just divide by L, which approximately, right, under the assumption of small values of y, which is the assumption behind this wave equation in the first place, the length of the chain is pretty much just L. So you can divide by, by L there. I should also put a minus sign here because I defined y to be pointing upwards, but gravity is pointing downwards. But then in that fraction, you've got m divided by L, mass per unit length, which is just the density, linear density rho. So that simplifies nicely to minus rho g. And so if we write out our, well, full wave equation under these assumptions, you get minus c squared times the second spatial derivative of y is equal to just minus g, right? Because you take minus rho g and then you divide it by rho. So we've just got to solve this differential equation. Fortunately, that's pretty easy to solve. Firstly, um, well, to make it a little bit more concise, let me use a double prime for our second derivative. If you divide both sides by minus c squared, uh, you're going to get, well, g over c squared, but then Let's go to our definition um, of, of C, and so that simplifies to just G rho divided by the tension. So you can just integrate this directly twice, right? If we integrate with respect to x once, we get that dy by dx, or y prime, is just G rho over t times x plus some constant, which I'm going to call alpha. You integrate again, your first term then becomes G rho over 2t times x squared. Second term becomes alpha x and then you get another constant which I'll call beta. So to decide what those constants alpha and beta should be we've got to apply some boundary conditions. So let's say bc is for boundary conditions over there. Well from the diagram you can see that by definition of our coordinate system the y value when x is zero um, is just zero right but also the y value when x is equal to l is also zero because those two points that we attach to the end of the chain are at the same height. So you can say y of 0 is equal to y of l, and both of those are equal to 0, right? So if we apply those boundary conditions, well, the first one, uh, if you substitute 0 into both sides of that equation, you just get 0 equals 0 plus 0 plus beta. So you directly get that beta actually has to be 0. Uh, if you apply your second boundary condition, then you are going to get 0 equals, well, g rho over 2t times l squared plus alpha l. Don't have to write beta because then we already decided that that is zero. Uh, because l is not zero, you can divide through by l and find that alpha is just, well, minus g rho 
over 2t times L. Now putting all of these results together and factorizing your expression for y gives a nice looking expression which is y is g rho over 2t and then you get x and x minus L, right? You can factorize it because of the fact that alpha has this g rho over 2t bit which also appeared in front of the x squared. This expression seems to be fairly intuitive. It's saying, for example, that if you increase the strength of gravity or you increase the density of your chain, that will both tend to make it sort of sag downwards even more, increase the magnitude of the y values. And conversely, if you increase the tension, if you pull harder on the ends of the chain, uh, then the y values will have a smaller magnitude because that tension is acting against gravity. Now, what you've got to bear in mind when you're interpreting this solution is that there is an assumption behind the wave equation itself, which is that the deflections or the y values are always small. Now, of course, there will be real life scenarios where that's not actually true at all. For example, if you take a very long chain and you peg both of its ends very close to each other, it's going to have a very large downwards deflection. Now, if the deflections get very big and your string is sort of strongly curved, then uh, the tension can no longer be assumed to be uniform in the string anyway. And so this, this expression that we've got down here doesn't really even make sense anymore because, well, what is that t? Because the tension is no longer uniform. Having said all of that, the exact solution to this problem turns out to be something called a catenary, which is basically a hyperbolic cosine function. It's one of the classic physics problems, so you can maybe go look that up if you're, if you're interested. Um, but if you look at the Taylor series of a hyperbolic cosine, you'll see that a parabola, like the type of function that we've got as our solution here, is actually quite a good approximation to a hyperbolic cosine. So under the assumption of uh, reasonably small deflections, this is actually quite a good approximation to the true solution.